I have here miracle number 68. It's the prediction of death of Abu Dhar al Ghifari. So, what was Abu Dhar al Ghifari famous for bef before uh, he became a Muslim? He used to rob people. He used to rob people, mashallah, very good. He was a leader, young leader of the young people who used to raid caravans, you know, where used to travel, the business people. This tribe used to make money out of that uh, raids that they used to do. And they used to say, oh, this, you cannot just make profits without giving something to us. So he used to raid uh, those caravans. Anyways, but he, one great thing about him was that since beginning, he never worshipped idols. He never worshipped idols. He always was searching for truth. And when he uh, learned that um, Rasulullah Sallallahu he came and the prophethood has arrived, he... Uh, immediately accepted Islam he immediately accepted Islam and he was like the fifth Muslim who accepted Islam through uh, Ali radiallahu anhu that whole story we mentioned some time before but uh, it's amazing that he I really am fascinated whenever I read his story he the way he accepted Islam and when he did meet Rasulullah sallallahu and he said Shahada, he was so excited, he was so feeling so nice that he said, I'm going to go uh, in near Kaaba and I'm going to say Shahada loudly. Ashadu wa la ilaha illallah, ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. And during that time, you know how dangerous it was. But he knew that he was going to be beaten up and he still went and he still did that. And it's just not that, he was beaten up really. Next day he did the same thing again. The third day he did the same thing again. So that was how uh, happy he was. He wanted to share that with the whole world and he, how he showed his emotions that way. So that was Abu Dhar al Ghifari. He went back to his tribe after accepting Islam. And even after Muslims made hijrah and everything, he was still staying there. And I think about in the time of Battle of Trench, Qandat came, day he moved to Medina. And during the battle of uh, Tabuk, we mentioned this battle also earlier, that uh, how all Muslims were preparing to go. Abu Dhar al Ghifari was in Medina and he wanted to go with them, but what happened was uh, his mount, his camel or horse, whatever, it failed, so he could not go. Uh, he fail, it failed in the in the middle. So what he did, he took all his belongings and he kept on his uh, back and he walked on foot. And just trying to catch up with Rasulullah and everybody. So when the Muslims saw that somebody is coming, Rasulullah uh, said that be Abu Dhar, be Abu Dhar. They, they couldn't figure out, and that turned out to be Abu Dhar al Rifai. So Rasulullah at that time, he when he came to him, he said that may Allah show mercy to Abu Dhar. He walks alone because he doesn't have a right and he will die alone and he will be raised alone and he also uh, what happened that uh, he heard that this comment from Rasulullah <coughs> and after uh, Rasulullah passed away he moved to one place called Rabada it was like a desert region right and during the uh, caliphate of Uthman you can say at that time so what happened that uh, area that he was living, it was kind of uh, all by himself. It, it was just he, he uh, his wife, and his slave. That's it. So what happened? He became sick, and he the, the time of death came. And his wife began to cry. Uh, she was crying, and Abu Dhar asked her, Why are you crying? She said that I'm crying because now you are on your deathbed all by yourself in the desert you don't have other muslims here and i don't even have a shroud to cover you if you die so she was crying like that and abu dhar said do not weep do not cry you should rejoice because rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said when i was with certain companions he said a man among you shall die in a desert whose funeral shall be witnessed by a group of believers so first of all, it's a good news that Rasulullah is mentioning me. And he knew that it was him because all the companions in front of whom he was mentioning, all of them died in the city. So he was the only one left. So he knew that it was him. And he told her not to worry because Rasulullah mentioned that a group of believers will pray on my janazah. 
So you are worrying that nobody is here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send somehow somebody and I will have somebody pray in my, as janaza. So she went out to look for people to help for help for coffin, for shroud and for uh, uh, preparation of janaza. So when she went out, she saw some people coming and she asked them that, can you help us? So and they were those people were really amazed that oh this is a sahabi at that time you know so much so many years passed by and our sahaba are like very very much in demand the people would love to see sahaba so they saw Abu Dhar and they were like we will do everything for him so they had a shroud and they covered him and they prayed janazah on him and they went away so that was in about 23rd hijri year so that's how the prediction of rasulullah came true that uh, so many predictions that he will die alone and he will uh, there will be group of Muslims praying on, on him as janazah and uh, the one thing that Rasulullah SAW told about him that is uh, that really honors him is that uh, he specifically told about Abu Dhar al-Ghifari that the earth doesn't carry nor the heavens cover a man more true and faithful than Abu Dhar al-Ghifari that was the highest comment that he gave for anybody. This was a very high honor, basically.